Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at indices. Now, this is something you'll have seen before in GCSE maths, but it's going to come up again at A level, so it's going to be important to know the laws of indices and be confident when it comes to using them to answer questions. So, hopefully this video is going to help with that. So we're going to start off by looking at where the laws of indices come from and what they are, but first we just need to know some terminology. So, say I had 4 to the power of 3, or 4 cubed, right? This big number at the bottom here, we call this the base, and we call this little number, which is the power, we call it the index, okay? And it's important to know that because in this video I'm going to be using both of those terms. So, big number at the bottom is the base, little number at the top, which is the power, we call the index, okay? So, let's take a look at the first question. So, say we have 2 cubed multiplied by 2 to the power of 4. And say I wanted to express this as just 2 to the power of some other number. Well, what would that be? So, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got 2 cubed which means I'm multiplying two by itself three times. So we've got two times two times two. And then I'm gonna be multiplying this by two to the power of four, which is just two multiplied by itself four times like this. So like I say, if I wanna write this as two to the power of some other number, well, how many times am I now multiplying two by itself? Well, I'm multiplying it by itself three times here from our two cubed, and I'm multiplying it by itself four times here from our two to the power of four. So in total, if I were to add my powers, you can see it tells me how many twos I've now got multiplying together. I've got three plus four, I've got seven twos. So the answer is gonna be two to the power of seven. And this is our first sort of law of indices. It says, if I've got some number a to the power of m, and I multiply that by the same number a, but this time to maybe a different power, n, that's equal to a to the power of m plus n, okay? And for this to hold true, I need these numbers at the bottom, this base, I need it to be equal. So A needs to be the same, right? So that's our first law of indices. So now look at another one. So here we have two to the power of four divided by two squared or two to the power of two. So again, if I wanted to express this as two to the power of some other number, what would it be? Well, we've got two to the power of four, which is two times two times two times two. And then we're dividing that by two squared, which is just two times two. And you can see on our numerator and our denominator, we have some common factors of two, so we can cancel them out. We've got this pair there that will cancel out. We've got this pair here that will cancel out. And that's gonna leave me with two squared, okay? Now, say this was two to the power of four divided by, say, two to the power of three, two cubed. Well, what have we got this time? Well, we've got the same, four twos on our numerator multiplied together, divided by three twos on our denominator multiplied together. And again, these are gonna cancel out. So let's cancel them out and see what we get left with. We get left with just two or two to the power of one. So you can see when we're dividing, what we're doing is our powers are being subtracted. So we're basically just saying for this first example, we're doing two to the power of four divided by two to the power of two, which is two to the power of four minus two. And that's where we get two squared. And in this example, we're doing two to the power of four divided by two to the power of three. We're just doing four subtract three in the power to leave us with two to the power of one. Hopefully you can see that. And so this is where our second law of indices is gonna come from. If we've got some base a to the power of m divided by the same base again, a, but this time maybe to a power of n, that's equal to a to the power of m subtract n. Okay, so that's another law that we need to be aware of. Let's look at a third one now. So here we've got two cubed all to the power of four, right? So what does this mean? Well, it basically just means we've got two cubed multiplied by itself four times. So we've got two cubed times two cubed times two cubed times two cubed. And so two cubed is just three lots of two, right? So I guess we can write this out, but it might be a lot, but we'll try. So two times two times two. And we've got this four times, okay? So let me sort of do this to make it a bit quicker. So we've got four of these, and you can see they're all multiplied together. I've just rewritten the same thing, but in our longer form. So how many twos do I now have here? Well, I've got these blocks of three, and I've got four of them, right? So if I wanted to express this as two to the power of some other number, I could just do three multiplied by four, because now I've got 12 twos. Hopefully that kind of visualizes what's going on. And so this is another rule that we've got. We've got, say I have a to the power of n, or m rather, and that's all to the power of n, that's equal to a to the power of m multiplied by n. And because multiplication is commutative, which means it doesn't matter what order we do it in, I could also write this as a to the power of n multiplied by m, and so I could really write this as a to the power of n all to the power of m. Hopefully that makes sense, that's not too confusing. It just means multiplication, it doesn't matter what order we do it in, so it doesn't matter if I do m times n or m times m, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So that is our third law that we're going to look at. So from these rules, we or laws, we can find some other facts out. So here we've got a to the power of negative 1. Now, 
Initially, I don't know what that means. But let's find a way of writing that. We could say a to the power of negative 1 is the same as a to the power of, say, uh, 2 subtract 3. Now, using our laws of indices that we looked at earlier, we said that that would be the same as a squared divided by a cubed, right? Hopefully that makes sense. And so we could really write this as a squared, so a times a divided by a cubed, which is a times a times a. And some of these a's are obviously going to cancel out. So these two will cancel out with the top two, and we just get left with 1 over a, right? And so what this means is if we've got a to the power of negative 1, we're just going to take what we call the reciprocal of whatever number we're dealing with. So for example, say we've got 2 to the power of negative 1. We're just going to do 1 over 2, and that's our answer, okay? But if we had a fraction, for example, say we had uh, 2 thirds all to the power of negative 1. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do 1 over 2 over 3, right? So what is that equal to? Well, some of you might know immediately, but if you're not too sure, we could say, well, it's the same as, because if we do a line like this, it just means divide. It basically just means we're doing 1, which I could write as 1 over 1, divided by 2 over 3. And so when I'm dividing fractions, I flip and times the second one. So it's 1 over 1 multiplied by 3 over 2. And so I get an answer of 3 over 2, right? So I've basically just flipped the numerator and the denominator of what I started with. So that's what we need to do if we have something to the power of negative 1. Now, say we didn't have it to the power of negative 1. Say we had it to the power of negative 3, for example. So it works pretty much the same way. So if we had, say, a to the power of negative 3, well, I could write that as, say, a to the power of 1 divide or a to the power of 1 minus 4, okay? Which is equal to a to the power of 1 divided by a to the power of 4. And so that would be equal to a over a times a times a times a. And so these two a's will cancel, and we get 1 over a cubed, right? So let's extend this to an actual example. Say we had 4 to the power of negative 3. Well, that's going to be equal to 1 over 4 cubed, which is equal to 1 over 64, I think. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's so if we've got a negative power, basically you want to do the reciprocal of the number. And if you've got it to the power of, say, negative 3, take the reciprocal of it to get rid of the negative sign, you know, and then deal with the power like normal. Let's look at a, another example here. So a to the power of 0. You might have seen this before. a to the power of 0 always equal to 1. Okay, why is that? Well, again, let's look at an example. So we could express a to the power of 0 as, say, a to the power of 3 subtract 3, which is the same as a cubed divided by a cubed. And I could write that as a cubed over a cubed. Now, with a fraction, if the numerator equals the denominator, then that fraction is equal to 1. Okay, because for example, say a cubed was equal to 8, 8 over 8 is just 1, right? And that's true of any number we pick. So this is just going to be equal to 1 because a cubed is obviously the same as a cubed. So a to the power of 0 or any number to the power of 0 equals 1. Finally, we have probably the most confusing one, I reckon. So a to the power of a half, what is that equal to? Okay, well, I'm going to show you it through a different way. So what we're going to start off by saying is I'm going to say that the square root of 2, okay, is equal to, say, 2 to the power of a. So what I mean by this is if I wanted to express the square root of 2 as 2 to the power of an indice, I currently don't know what that indice is, so I'm just going to call it a, and we're going to try and work out what a is. Now, in the next video, we're looking at thirds, but you'll have to take my word for it if you're unsure. If I was to do root 2 multiplied by root 2, that's going to equal 2. Hopefully you understand that, yeah? Root 2 times root 2 is 2, okay? But it's also equal to my 2a times by 2a. And using a law of indices we looked at at the start, if I've got 2 to the power of a times 2 to the power of a, that's equal to 2 to the power of a plus a. So I could say that 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 2a. And if I've got 2 on its own, that's basically to the power of 1. And so these two things are equal, which means the powers must be equal. So 1 must be equal to 2a. Okay. And so if 1 is equal to 2a, let me write this down, then that must mean that a, if I divide both sides by 2, is equal to 1 half. So now we've got an answer for a, and that tells me, okay, the square root of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 1 half. Okay? And so if I have a to the power of a half, it's just equal to the square root of a. And we can extend this idea to any sort of root we want. So, for example, if we had a to the power of 1 over n, that's just equal to the nth root of a. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Another example could be if we had uh, 27 to the power of 1 third, that's just equal to the cube root of 27, which is 3, I think. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.
So let's now look at some examples or questions using all of these facts we've just learned. So here we have four to the power of three over two. So again, we haven't exactly looked at an example like this, but let's see how we can work it out. So I'm gonna use the first law of indices we looked at to say that, well, this is the same as four to the power of a half times three, okay? Doesn't matter what order we do this in because multiplication is commutative, like we said at the start. So four to the power of a half, that's just the square root of four. We said that a minute ago. So we've got the square root of four and that's times three, right? So that's the same, or oh, sorry, that's all to the power of that times three. So that's the same as that cubed. So from here, the square root of four is just two, and we've got two cubed, which is equal to eight. Now you could have done it the other way around, like we said earlier. So you could have done four cubed all to the power of a half, which would be 64 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 64. But that's usually a bit more confusing to do than just squaring, square rooting the number and then cubing it, right? Hopefully that makes sense because you're dealing with smaller numbers. This second example, we've got x to the power of four times x squared all divided by x cubed. So to start with, x to the power of four times x to the power of two, the base is the same, so we're gonna get add the powers and we get x to the power of six divided by x cubed. Now, when we're dividing, we've got the same base, so we could say this is equal to x to the power of six divided by x to the power of three or x cubed. So we subtract the powers and we get x to the power of three or x cubed as our answer. This one here, we looked at something like this earlier. So two to the power or two over three, sorry, to the power of negative one, we just take the reciprocal of it. So it's gonna be three over two. And finally, we've got 4 over 9 to the power of negative 3 over 2. So how do we deal with this? Well, to get rid of this negative, like we said, we're going to take the reciprocal of it. So now we've got 9 over 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, my sort of the half part, this part on the bottom, that means I'm going to square root it. So I'm going to take the square root of 9 over 4. Okay, and then that's all going to be cubed. Now we're going to look at this again in our next video, but if I'm taking the square root of a fraction, I can distribute that square root across the numerator and the denominator. So this is the same as the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 4. So that's going to give me 3 over 2 all cubed, and that's going to be 27 over 4. Okay, so hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe, and share. I'll go over to my channel for tons more tutorials, and I'll link the rest of this Preparing for A Level Maths playlist in the video description. Thanks for watching.